Okay, just a reminder as we begin this morning that uh, it's a nice day out there, but we need to make sure we have a phone number or some way of contacting each one of you here today in case of church cancellations for the winter or different things that come up. If the uh, parking lot is too icy and we can't get it defrosted, why we just won't let you come in. <laughs> and also remember the roads. If the roads are officially closed, we probably won't have services. Even if we come in and have a service just to make this a CD or something, uh, we probably will cancel. Uh, just for safety. We know that there's a lot of you, we used to have more of the uh, folks here that if you didn't cancel, they'd be here even if the roads were closed and if there were drifts three feet high on the roads and stuff. So they were going to try to be here anyway. And, and so we've uh, decided to just close. Now, if you haven't looked forward to the long range forecast for the week ahead, Saturday and Sunday next are supposed to have a wintry mix all Saturday and Sunday turning over to all snow Sunday night. So. Uh, that sounds wonderful. We're going to have fall weather. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're going to see if we can get Adam to come over and do some shoveling for us when we need it. And, and, but, uh, we try to get things cleared up here pretty, pretty well. Things clear over here, so we'll see how things go. But uh, just to let us know. Let Marianne know if you don't, if we don't have your your uh, phone record, if it's not right on the list or if it's not on there, well, then please. Uh, see, see us to get so that we know we have you to contact. Okay, <clears throat> let's begin this morning. I'm going to look at uh, Nabal in First Samuel 25, a man of Belial, <laughs> and so we'll be seeing that in just a few minutes. Let's take our songbook and turn to number 13. Number 13. <clears throat> Number 13. Praise ye the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him for me in my health and salvation. Oh, Oh, my 
made us. He's made this world. We're going to be looking at that today. Be seeing uh, the great power of God. <clears throat> Number 34. 34. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. 34. <laughs> We see that there's, uh, this is where Samuel dies. Now we may come back and do um, a few other messages on 1 Samuel 25. There are several things in here, but today I just want to hit through the main uh, theme, uh, the whole thing that we see in it of um, Nabal and David's dealing with him and his wife there. So, 1 Samuel chapter 25. The very beginning we see that Samuel died. Verse 1, and Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. Uh, and David arose, went down to the wilderness of Paran. 
So remember David's being chased around still and the king keeps saying, oh, I won't hurt you, I won't do anything, and then the next thing is chasing him again. And so it's uh, trying to, one of those uh, games, you know, that goes on in life, how you have wicked people and you have righteous people and you have uh, the battle that goes on between that. Uh, we've had different things. We, uh, like that one, one person in the community in particular has always been, every time she's around us, why it just, uh, I mean, there's a clash. The, the, the devils and the Holy Spirit are just, uh, you can see the power and feel the, the, the problems there. Uh, and yet, what do you do? You keep on going, you pray for people, you, uh, the Lord can change. We've seen the Lord change a lot of hearts in the 20 years we've been here. Uh, we've seen relationships come um, with our neighbors around us that uh, weren't here before. We uh, have seen people in the community that uh, will look up to us for uh, spiritual wisdom and things that, uh, when they have problems. And so that's, that's a big plus. When we first came here, it was hard to even get a track in a door. Dick, you, you and I went out a lot and for the, some of the uh, special speakers and stuff, we never had anybody come in from the community. Uh, the big thing was you couldn't even get a door open far enough to slip a track in or a notice that we're having a guest speaker or something. Uh, that has changed a lot. God has really worked in the community. Now we don't see droves of people coming in, uh, but we do see some good coming out of all of it. <clears throat> so uh, here we have uh, Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him and buried him in his house at Ramah. Now I'm just going to say that that's Christian burial. Uh, we don't, the uh, heathen are the ones that burn, and so with all the cremation today, it's so cheap. Just, you know, who cares? Just burn people up. Well, it doesn't give the testimony of a Christian, so that's something to consider when you think about that. Uh, we plan on being buried. That's the Bible way all the way through. And so we'll, we don't have a place to be buried yet, but well, we'll have to work on that. Anyway, maybe we won't have to be buried. Maybe we're just gonna be snatched out of here uh, and gone, so with the, be with the Lord. So whatever happened. Now I realize that it makes no difference to the person that's in the grave. Once you die, why death is taken over and uh, you're not gonna care if you're with the Lord, okay? Uh, you don't care what happens to that body because it's a, this body is decaying and going to the grave, we know that. Uh, but as a testimony uh, of Jesus Christ and his word, uh, that's the way they did it, they buried, and I believe that that's still right today that we should bury one another after we're dead, okay? After this body dies, then we're alive forevermore. So uh, <clears throat> what a, one of those tough things. So anyway, David arose and went down to the wilderness of Paran. Now, uh, Paran is down in the, uh, it's a hilly w wilderness that's down south of Israel, uh, south of Judah and south of uh, the land grant to Israel. And he went down there to the wilderness of Paran, still stay, trying to stay out of the king's reach, still trying to stay, stay far enough away that he won't be rubbing shoulders with him and his men. Uh, in verse 2, and there was a man in Maon whose possessions, possessions uh, were in Carmel. And the man was very great. And he had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Uh, so he had possessions in Carmel. He was of Maon. And Maon is a, a city that's uh, given to the tribe of Israel this way down south also. Uh, in that area south of Israel. Uh, then Carmel, of course, is a city that's in uh, Judah. It's a part of Judah. And so he, down there, and that's anyway the southern part of Israel, uh, in the wilderness there, and this man was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the man wasn't. The man was at home being a bad man. <laughs> And so his servants that he had and hired were out there doing this. Now, verse three, now the name of the man was Nabal and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in his doings. And he was of the house of Caleb. 
So he was churlish and evil in his doing. Uh, had a wonderful wife that was a good wife, uh, but he was a wicked man. And so to be churlish is to be selfish, to be harsh and unfeeling towards anything but yourself. Just uh, that, that's what he was. And he was a wicked man, as we'll see as we go on through here. <clears throat> and he was named Nabal. Isn't it something in the Old Testament, uh, you'll see the names given to people and it's about their personality. So what do you think Nabal means? Foolish, a fool. And so his name was a fool. And we'll see that as uh, even his wife mentions that. <clears throat> Verse four, and David heard in the wilderness that Nabal did share his sheep. And David sent out 10 young men, and David said unto the young men, get you up to Carmel and go to Nabal and greet him in my name. And so he's having these uh, young men that are uh, uh, guarding the shearing of the sheep to keep looters, robbers, whatever, uh, away from them, to protect them. And that's what uh, David's men were doing. So now he tells 10 of them to go to Nabal and greet him in my name, in David's name. Isn't that something? He says, don't use your own name because they won't know you, but they know me, I'm David. I killed Goliath, everybody knows that. And I'm the man that uh, has been right hand to the king of Israel for all these years. And so they know me, I'm David, okay? So go in my name, he says. Isn't that something, you know, when we go, we go in Jesus' name. If we run into problems with the devil, we just use Jesus' name. Our name doesn't mean anything. Uh, if you're a Christian, why you've got the power of Jesus and God in your life. Uh, but you use his name. And the, verse six, and thus shall ye say to him that liveth in prosperity, peace be both to thee, and peace be to thine house, and peace be unto all that thou hast. Now remember David is in exile, he's running from being killed, and he's, so he's hiding one place and another, and all the, these things. David is um, looking for peace. He sees this place, uh, peace, be to thee, peace be to thine house, peace be unto all that thou hast. Now, verse seven, now I have heard that thou hast shears. Uh, now thy shepherds which were with us, we hurt them not, neither was there aught missing unto them. All the while they were in Carmel. Uh, so he's going to send these guys to say, okay, this is from David, the king in exile. <laughs> this is the one that you know. He said, and they're sending to him and saying, listen, we helped them out. We kept them protected and safe all the time of the sheep sharing there in Carmel. Uh, then he, they go on and say to uh, Nabal, ask the young men and they will show thee. Wherefore, let the young men find favor in thine eyes, for we come in a good day. Give, I pray thee, whatsoever cometh to thine hand unto thy servants and to thy son David. Uh, so he's saying, we're just asking if you could spare a little bit of your, uh, of your surplus and just help us out, because uh, we're helping you out, okay? Now there wasn't any agreement there, it's just a, simply a thing that, okay, we help you out, you help us, a neighborly type thing. Uh, verse nine, when David's young men came, they spake to Nabal according to all those words in the name of David and ceased. So they said what they were supposed to and they stopped. And Nabal answered David's servants and said, who is David? <laughs> who is the son of Jesse? Now how do you know that? Did they say that he was the son of Jesse? Of course, everybody knew that in the kingdom. Uh, and who is the son of Jesse? There be many servants nowadays that break away every man from his master. Shall I then take my bread and my water and my flesh that I have killed for my shears and give it unto men whom I know not whence they be? Well, he's self-centered. He is a churlish man. David's young men turned their way and went again and came and told him all those sayings. Now, David wasn't too happy. He was hoping to have a little bit of sustenance anyway from them. Uh, they didn't take anything out there when, with, from the animals, all those animals that were out there. Instead, they protected them for Nabal and his servants. 
Verse 13, David said unto his men, Gird ye on every man his sword. And they girded on every man his sword, and David also girded on his sword. And there went up after David about 400 men, and 200 abode by the stuff. Uh, so they had about 600 men, and 400 are going to go up and talk to Nabal in a bad way. <laughs> They're going to say, um, you know, you, that's not right what you're doing. You ought to help people out when they have a need. So verse 14, one of the young men told Abigail, Nabal's wife, saying, behold, David sent messengers out of the wilderness to salute our master, and he railed on them. He railed, he just let them have it and said, to, you know, we don't care about you. You just, you know, who are you? Who do you think you are anyway? He railed on him. Uh, so this is what the servants are telling Abigail. Obviously they knew that Abigail was a good godly woman and uh, Nabal was a man of the devil. But the men were very good unto us and we were not hurt, neither missed we anything as long as we were conversant with them when we were in the fields. They were a wall unto us both by night and day, all the while we were with them keeping the sheep. Uh, so they were the protection about them. They were the wall about them. Nobody was going to get through and harm these workers of Nabal. Verse 17, Now therefore know and consider what thou wilt do. For evil is determined against our master and against all his household. For he is such a son of Belial that a man cannot speak to him. Now, a son of, uh, first of all, Belial simply means a worthless, uh, a, a wicked person, okay? Uh, it's used in the Old Testament, a son of Belial as the now, the proper noun for the devil, for Satan. And so he's talking, they're talking about a man of the devil here. Uh, he's, a, he's wicked, ungodly, uh, evil, uh, everything that goes along with the devil. And so he's a, a man that they liken to a son of Belial, the son of the devil. Uh, <clears throat> a man cannot speak to him. Then Abigail made haste and took 200 loaves. Well, she realizes the danger when you've got somebody that ha you have upset that bad, <laughs> uh, then they might just come and take what they, what they need, you know. And so she's a very wise woman. And she made haste, took 200 loaves and two bottles of wine, five sheep ready dressed and five measures of parched corn, 100 clusters of raisins, 200 cakes of figs, and laid them on asses. And she said unto her servants, Go on before me. Behold, I come after you. But she told not her husband Nabal. Uh, here she's going around him because she wants to try to save their family and save the lives of all of those, knowing that uh, David and his men would be very upset being treated that way. Verse 20, it was so as she rode on the ass that she came down by the covert of the hill and behold, David and his men came down against her uh, and she met them. Uh, the covert, it's uh, like the hideout, the covert, there's several different meanings for covert uh, in the language today, but the, the covert is a hideout or a den primarily. Uh, and it can be, some others say it can even be a, a porch on your house, those kind of things. So there are different things, but here they are, uh, they're in a den or they're in a hideout down there. And so that's where she met them. It says, uh, <clears throat> and she met them. And now verse 21, now David said, had said, surely in vain have I kept all that this fellow had in the wilderness so that nothing was missed of all that pertaineth unto him and he hath requited me evil for good. <laughs> not, that's not a, not a bright thing to do. <laughs> you uh, need to do good for good and, uh, and take good for evil also. Verse 22, so and more also do God unto the enemies of David if I leave all that pertains to him by the morning light, any that pisseth against the wall. Of course, talking about the arm, the men that go out. And when Abigail saw David, she hasted and lighted off the ass um, and fell before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. 
Now I know some of these terms like, like the ass being a donkey, we still call them that today in real life. And, in, and uh, so it's not something that's bad even though the world has made many terms of the Bible to, be, to sound awful. Uh, this is just simply the animal that she was riding. Fell down before David on her face and bowed herself to the ground. Verse 24, and fell at his feet and said, Upon me, my Lord, upon me let this iniquity be. And let thine handmaid, I pray thee, speak in thine audience and hear the words of thine handmaid. Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard this man of Belial. Here's a, a wife talking about, straightforward about her husband. Uh, boy, what a shame when that has to happen, that, that there's such an awful uh, rift there. A, man of, a woman of God and a man of the devil. Uh, and so everybody obviously that worked for him knew him. That's why the young men went to a, uh, Abigail instead of going to him and, and talking about it. Uh, Let not my Lord, I pray thee, regard the, this man of Belial, even Nabal. For as his name is, so is he. What's his name? Fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Uh, he's a fool. That's what his name means. Nabal is his name and folly is with him. But I, thine handmaid, saw not the young men of my Lord, whom thou didst send. Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth, seeing the Lord hath withholden thee from coming to shed blood and from avenging thyself with thine own hand, now let thine enemies and they that seek evil to my Lord be as Nabal. Uh, so she's interceding here and saying, uh, listen, don't pay any attention to him, but we're, I'm, I'm asking you, here's, here's substance that I brought you, here's things that'll get you through, um, and don't try to avenge these things yourself. Now David knew that, how many times have we seen that? He won't avenge himself of things. He turns it over to the Lord and says, Lord, you take care of it. And here he was uh, all up in the flesh and ready to go after him and gonna kill them all and take what he wanted. Uh, but he was after avenging himself instead of letting the Lord avenge for him. Uh, she brought him back to his right senses. Uh, now that's, that's a woman of God that can come to a, a leader, a king in exile, and talk to him and show him uh, he's wrong in a kind way <laughs> to change his mind. Verse 27, now this blessing which thine hus uh, handmaid hath brought unto my Lord, let it even be given unto the young men that follow my Lord. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thine handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. And evil hath not been found in thee all thy days. <clears throat> So uh, again, uh, evil isn't with David. Evil, it's not for him to do those kind of things. Uh, and yet he was ready to give into the flesh and go after it. Verse 29, yet a man is risen to pursue thee and to seek thy soul, but the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God and the souls of thine enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. So here she's telling him, listen, uh, you're, you walk with the Lord and let the Lord take care of things and uh, your enemies are gonna be like they've been shot out of a sling. Uh, you don't have to worry about your enemies. The Lord's gonna take care of you. Here's an encouragement from this woman in David's predicament. Uh, you don't often think about that, how something you read through this and you just don't realize the, uh, the depth of this situation and what she is doing. Verse 30, it shall come to pass when the Lord shall have done to my Lord according to all the good that he hath spoken concerning thee and shall have appointed thee ruler over Israel that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, either that thou hast shed blood uh, causeless, or that my Lord hath avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. 
So she's saying, listen, the Lord's going to take care of you. Now, did Nabal know that he was going to be king? His wife did. And uh, so it's pretty obvious that he was just playing his selfish little games of being his, his churlish, wicked self uh, when, uh, they, when the young men talked to him. Uh, everybody knew David. Everybody in Israel knew David. <clears throat> And so she had it right. She told him that uh, this man, you know, the king, she didn't mention it was the king, but that this man that is chasing you and trying to get you, the Lord will take care of him and you'll be safe. You'll, you'll, make a, you'll be the king one day. And she's saying, uh, then uh, remember me. <laughs> remember thine handmaid. And David said to Abigail, <laughs> Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, which sent thee this day to meet me. Well, I guess she stopped him from doing something that he'd have regretted the rest of his kingship, <laughs> the rest of his life. And so he said, thank you, Lord. Uh, and verse 33, and blessed be thy advice and blessed be thou, which hast kept me this day from coming to shed blood and from avenging myself with mine own hand. You know, a lot of times the, the right word that we give to somebody when they're all upset and they're ready to go after somebody uh, can make a big difference. They realize that vengeance is mine, I will repay it, saith the Lord. And so let's let the Lord take care of that. Uh, you know, we can be persecuted and get in trouble with the world and with the neighbors and with the uh, uh, unsaved and the wicked people of the world, and even with Christians, let the Lord take care of it. Okay? Uh, For in very deed, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, which hath kept me back from hurting thee, except thou hast hasted and come to meet me, surely there had not been left unto Nabal by the morning light 